BuddyWise and MeltSpot are two companies combining the power of AI and IoT to address two different challenges. MeltSpot deploys sensors to track visitor flow in places like shopping malls. They then turn the collected data into actionable insights using one of the most powerful tools available for real-world data analytics. BuddyWise is a startup with a purpose, uncovering workplace safety risks before they cause an accident. BuddyWise does this by utilizing computer vision and machine learning. This improves and automates safety monitoring and risk mitigation, particularly in construction and manufacturing. Please welcome Marcus Malmquist, CTO at Meltspot, and Lamine Fay, CEO at BuddyWise. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Welcome, Alexander and Lamine. How are you doing today? Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah, right? Such That's an great, inspiring thanks. day. With having an audience like this yep. after such a long time, right? So uh, your colleague Marcus was supposed to be here, unfortunately, he too got sick. But those are the times, but then I got the opportunity to have you here. Instead, I jumped Alexander. in. Yeah, you jumped in, and I love that about you. <laughs> now we're talking about some of my favorite topics. We're talking about artificial intelligence and IoT, rapidly evolving technologies. And the both of you, from your different perspectives, are user, using this differently. And um, you know, one of the biggest questions that everyone keeps asking, so how do we uh, look at AI and security and privacy? So I think that we start with that question. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. So I start with you, Lemon. Uh, so how do you address these privacy concerns that we might have? Yeah, I mean, I think every conversation I have with a new customer starts with this question, so <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's, it's a good start. I mean, there's two, two aspects that are very important when it comes to privacy or GDPR, as we call it in, in Europe, and one is, is legal grounds and the other one is data minimization. So if you, if you take that into sort of normal people speak, it's have a good, a damn good reason why you're collecting data and even then uh, make sure that you collect as little as possible. And, and, and as said nicely in this video, what we do at BodyWise is that we use cameras cameras combined with AI and computer vision to prevent uh, and eliminate safety risks in order to prevent accidents, to prevent uh, injury and in worst cases loss of life. So we have a pretty uniquely legitimate interest for, for why we're even collecting data and that's where it start, starts. And, and, and in delivering uh, this solution and, and doing this sort of important work, what we also do is that we only analyze things in real time so we don't save the video uh, that is that is being uh, fed through the system. We uh, don't use any technology that can actually identify people, so no facial recognition of these kind of things. And we actually have very few people that are even allowed to look at the video stream. So let's say you have a factory with about 100 people, there is only maybe one or two people that have access to the feed and the rest only have access to the metadata. So like you can see in our demo, this is the number of people of, that are wearing the right personal protection equipment or forklifts driving in, in restricted zones and so on. So we really view, uh, in this case, the camera as a very powerful sensor that only the AI actually should look at to extract what is important in this situation or in this image to prevent incidents. Um, yeah. Fantastically good reason. I'd share my data with you any day. If Thank you. Could. you. Yeah, most <laughs> definitely. Alexander, when we talk about Meltspot, uh, how do you address these privacy concerns? You're looking at this from a different angle. Yeah, well, I'm also very happy that you asked that question first because it's also the first question <laughs> our customers ask us. Uh, and if they don't ask it, we will make sure that they understand our point of view here because it's very important. Uh, actually, Privacy is one of the pillars of Healthspot and our company um, because we analyze visitor flow uh, based on uh, collecting data from uh, mobile phones. So obviously, unfortunately, it seems that your microphone is a little bit, a bit shaky. Shaky. Yeah, so right. use that. Put that towards yeah. your chin, and it'll sure. work. Is it better? I think so. So uh, uh, no. Uh, 
Here? You hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. So, um, we are analyzing uh, people flow and movements of people, right? Visitors. Uh, and obviously, uh, when we det detect mobile phones, it becomes a concern about privacy. So, uh, what we have done is we solved it very, very well, simply, I would say. It's not simple, but in a simple way to explain. We use a, a principle called privacy by design. So, we don't handle sensitive data. Our data is already anonymized when we collect it. And we do that by, instead of taking the full set of data that is provided from the mobile phone, we take a subset of data from that data package and we create an ID that has the same characteristics for several phones. So many phones will look the same. So you can never pinpoint out a single phone or an individual behind that phone because many will look the same. So not even our tech team can find their own phones in our system. Share data with you too, to be <laughs> honest, Alexander. So thank you. <laughs> thank you and and so, sorry, in terms of AI as well, yeah. we feed our models with that anonymous data. So there will never be any concern with AI models either. So it, they're not personalized data when it reaches the AI. There, there are no personal information in the data. No, great. So uh, when you're working with this visitor analytics, uh, and I know that you are represented at in the Innovation Hub, so everyone, you're more than welcome to join you out there if you have any further questions, of course. But what benefits are the customers uh, from getting from your solutions? And, and describe the role that AI and IoT is. So w we provide advanced analytics of visitor movements, visitor flows, KPIs around how uh, visitors are behaving in a certain area that we measure. And that will become data-driven insights. So it's real facts that we provide to our customers. Those insights, obviously, our customers will use to make better decisions. Uh, and in terms of AI, um, well, um, we handle a vast amount of data, obviously, uh, collecting data from phones in cities and shopping malls and theme parks. Uh, it becomes a lot of data. And it will be impossible for the human brain to actually make those analytics. So we use AI models to actually process that data to find um, deviations, uh, correlations between different uh, data points, create trends and future uh, predictions. And of course, uh, yeah, you may, we, the video showed uh, some of our markets like shopping malls, obviously, but smart cities is another topic, of course, that is a very uh, uh, hot topic, I would say. Many I cities want to be smart, and we help them with that. Um, so, um, uh, urban planning, of course, to understand how people walk on walking path, optimizing your, your routes uh, for safety, uh, what happens when you install lightning, does it become better or not? Uh, you have a, a tool that will actually provide you real facts. At this point, but also, as you're saying, you can look ahead and you can predict the future using data analytics like that. Yes, so, so with the AI model, the more data we have, obviously, the, the better our models becomes. Yeah. And they can find uh, trends and uh, based on the history, but also we can actually connect third-party data to these AI models, like weather, for example. And then you can actually predict how the behavior will change based on the weather. Yeah, I can imagine. Now, let me turn to you, because you address a very important issue all over the world. If I'm correctly informed, there is about 6,000 deaths, uh, work-related deaths a day in the world. Is that correct? Yeah, it's, it's mind-blowing that you think you got the number wrong. That's, but it is actually right. It's 6,000 it, yeah. people a day. And that how many injured <coughs> then? I mean, that's enormously... Uh, f and very scary looking at it. Absolutely. But how did you start working with, with this? And how are you using AI and IoT to address these issues? Yes, so I mean, you're right. It's, it's 340 million actually people globally that get uh, in seriously injured every, uh, every year. Uh, and about 
three trillion dollars in in cost so so workplace injuries and illnesses is a massive global problem i think it's four percent of gdp um but the, the the sort of the good news in all that bad news is that before we have an incident we get a lot of early indicators sort of near incidents or, or safety risk or sort of a window into the future about what serious accident will actually happen so there's a great opportunity in detecting these risks and these near near misses before they lead to an energy injury. Um, so what we do is we, we use uh, AI and computer vision to detect these safety risks. They can be things being laid around, uh, everything from wooden pallets to people not we wearing protective gear or forklifts driving too close to people. And we visualize and analyze this uh, information and uh, basically provide them to, to our customers. It could be in the, in the shape of a siren that immediately goes off and, and alerts the forklift driver that they're, they're in the wrong field. Uh, it can be uh, visuals. We have a heat map where you can see, okay, these are all the places, for example, where forklifts are driving too close to people because it's too narrow or uh, whatever the reason might be. And uh, there can be other types of, of alerts to, through SMSs or, or emails. So everything we do is made in real time so we can both collate data, show trends, show changes over time, but also alert them immediately if, uh, if something happens. It can also be a person lying down, which is another uh, incident that we can detect then and, and, and alert people immediately. Mm. I see. That's amazing. A great job, an important job. But I've also heard you talking about be there being two evergreens uh, in regarding the challenges in workplace safety. Can you describe what do you mean by that? I think it happened. It, it, it's actually at the core of, of what we are doing. And, and we had the keynote speaker was talking about like what should people do and what should machines do. And, and in this case, we're actually one of the evergreen challenges is our reliance on people, our reliance on people to actually report the risk that they see in the workplace. Where actually a lot of the times they are the ones that have become blind to the situation or, or uh, have developed work practices that are unsafe. Um, and I think the, the, the best example, so this sort of this reliance on, on people to report to the employer to make a change, to the employer to make a change and then rely on the people again to report back if this isn't working, um, breaks down in the, in the first instances of that process. Um, so what we do is we sort of go away from this reliance, save time for people to not have to, to focus on these things and, and go away from the challenge of, of blind spots and, and these kind of challenges that you have when you, when you look at your own situation and you're, you're a patient diagnosing yourself essentially to machines doing it. And I think this is the right application of, of, of AI and computer vision. And, and I think the favorite example that I have when it comes to, to finally solving this evergreen is that a, a factory manager that uh, is, is managing a, a rather large plant who has been using our system for the last four months. And we had a feedback meeting with him a few weeks ago where he said that the main thing that he got out of uh, this sort of first few months of, of using the system was that it really clarified for him the difference between how he thought that work was being performed to what actually was happening. And in that meeting, they showed us six very specific safety improvements that they had made on our insights. And, and, and I mean, these are things that uh, really make a difference for the safety at that site um, and, you know, makes this factory manager be able to sleep well. Uh, it makes me be able to get up in the morning doing something that, that has an impact. Um, so I think this is really the, 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 from my point of view, the value that AI can have where, where we're complementing uh, people and doing things that people are not, are not great at, actually. Mm. So, Mats Levon is absolutely right. This is a, a way where we need the machines yes. and artificial intelligence. Alexander, turning to you, uh, you've built one of the most powerful tools for visitors' analytics. So, how does it work and why is it a game changer, would you say? Well, uh, to start with, um, we see all phones. <laughs> So uh, th there's no need for apps. There's no need for having Wi-Fi switched on, uh, or Bluetooth. Uh, so basically, we create analytics of all the phones that are uh, visible. And we do it with privacy in mind. And it's completely anonymous. So that's obviously uh, the benefit with that solution that, that 
you don't need additional uh, sensors or data points. With one system, you can actually get a full view of your visitor's um, flow. Hmm. Um, and obviously, with, with AI helping out to create very uh, powerful insights. So uh, companies in our business that work with business intelligence, uh, they really get good, good uh, basis for making good decisions. Yeah, that's good. Fantastically having when putting strategies and analysis on the future, right? Now, AI, of course, has been talked for uh, a long time and um, talking about tech circles. So um, it seems that only recently we've started seeing the real benefits uh, from it. So let me, would you see it taking us in the future? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's been a large that we talked about that before going on stage that AI actually for a long time was was uh, very very stupid, uh, <laughs> and and I think that's a lot of the experience that we have had. You know, you can get Most a recommendation definitely. of what kind of cucumber to to buy um, at IKEA. That's sort of been the extent of it. But I think that the big difference that is happening now has been driven by really by two things. One is uh, the power and the, the the cost of compute, and the other one is is deep learning. Uh, if you take um, if you take the deep learning, I mean, and, and looking at computer vision specifically, um, the introduction of AlexNet in, in about 10 years ago has made computer vision go from an accuracy of 75% roughly to now 99% or peaking out at 99 plus percent. Um, and this is just in, in, in the last 10 years where we have gone from basically useless, which, which I would say 75% is, to better than human vision. <laughs> Uh, human vision is about 95%, you know, our ability to recognize a cat for a cat. Uh, so it's actually better than, than, than human vision. So I think this is one big part, uh, deep learning. The other one is, is compute or the cost of compute I would look at. Because deep learning and, and uh, complex AI is very compute heavy. And, but right now we're looking at an improvement um, or a doubling of uh, how much compute you get per dollar every two years, roughly. And when you work in this field, th 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 that's not theoretical. We have cut our cost by 50% just since the start of this year, and we will do uh, the same journey uh, during next year. So it's a, it's a massive difference in terms of cost of compute that basically makes it also financially viable to offer these kind of analytics. Um, and last thing I would say that, that's going to come uh, and that is coming now is connectivity. Because this will give us access from anyone's phone, from anyone's device to the most powerful compute uh, available at Quite. any instant. Yeah. Um, and I think this is going to change things massively because then we will see AI solutions being brought to places where, where they simply weren't available before because now we have 5G, 15, 16, 2000 uh, megabit connections wherever you are. And, and that makes us able to bring these services wherever. Hmm. Well, I can see that we're seeing enormous possibilities in the future and regarding predicting the future and being able to assist where us humans have different needs. But addressing you once again, Alexander, where did you see AI taking us from your perspective and from, uh, from your com uh, company's perspective? And um, especially I was thinking about, you know, are there any other markets or industries that you foresee where you can address new types of challenges with AI? Well, challenges, I, th I think we only see opportunities here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, in the space where we are, in, in business intelligence, uh, as of today, as I said, AI is helping us to find these hidden correlations in the, in the complex data sets that the human brain can't find. So we use these models to help us find uh, uh, deviations and uh, uh, you know d differences that we can't uh, find ourselves. So with AI today, we have it for helping us creating insights for our customers. And our customers will use those insights to make decisions, right? But in the future, I think the AI models will actually come up with suggest suggested solutions already, uh, or suggested decisions, not only insights. It will actually propose decisions for a smart city, for example. Exactly. Did you think of actually placing a toilet in the park? Because there's a lot of people there over, over the days and the weeks, and there is no toilet. So 
smarter systems with AI can actually give our customers suggested decisions before they even knew they had a decision to make. So, so there are endless possibilities, yeah, right? De definitely. No that, that's how we look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You know what? I have these amazing digital hosts here, and they, I see how they are longing to ask you some questions. So fire away, Judy and Joanna. Yeah, I, I'm going to start with you, Alexander. Um, I think it's a little bit related to what you were just talking about, so maybe it's a bit of a follow-up. But they, they want to know if MeltSpot could become part of a, a larger smart city ecosystem and how you could use data that you're collecting to, for things like city planning? Uh, definitely. That's, that's uh, what we're looking in at and discussing with our customers in uh, smart cities. Um, so we have an API where they can actually, uh, all our insights can be uh, 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 provided into uh, other systems. So uh, a popular thing now is digital twins. So you have uh, smart cities actually digitalizing uh, everything that happens in the city, and they need sensors for that. And we're part of that infrastructure. So yes, we can actually be part of a larger ecosystem. Excellent. And uh, Lamin and Bodywise, you, um, we have a question. We want the numbers. You gave us a few examples <laughs> on how Bodywise can prevent injuries, but do you have any statistics of how many injuries or even deaths that you might have helped to prevent? Yeah, it's very difficult, of course, to, to, to know how many deaths you prevent. But I mean, in, in, a, in, a, in a normal factor or situation, we make thousands of observations every day. And of course, when you look at probability, every incident, even, you know, having a, a, a piece of, um, <laughs> I don't know, uh, wrapping paper on, on a walking path can be the one that actually makes you trip down the stairs and, and really hurt yourself. So, you know, if I want to be, be uh, kind to myself, I can say, well, actually thousands every day but it's all about reducing the probability of that one thing happen but any of these small incidents could actually have been the one so tricky tricky questions to answer we have 340 million serious accidents to try and bring down so we we have a lot of the work ahead of us even though it might be thousands uh, a day that we are sort of incrementally preventing and how are the uh, employees responding to the solution well, I mean, this is, of course, uh, uh, an important thing for us where, where we have, from the start, really positioned ourselves in terms of how we offer the service, how we build it technically, and how we communicate around it, that, that this is a service that is actually there for the worker. Only 1% of venture capital acts has actually gone to workers that don't sit in front of a desk. So this sort of employee group is very unused to actually digital technology being for them. Um, and the feedback that we're getting uh, is that actually uh, workers do see it in this way and they see it as a way where they can also have a discussion with management with the challenges they have with safety at work. Because all of them, and I can guarantee all of them, want to leave work without an injury and, and, and you know, get home at the end of the day. So, so we are at, at this time in a really positive uh, point where, when it comes to how workers see this system. And uh, we do a lot of sort of interviews and, and discussions with them to make sure that we really build the system to continue to be actually a tool for the deskless worker uh, and actually a tool for them to, to help them work safer. Thank you so much for that. Mm. Well, and me too. I'd like to say thank you very much. It's been impressive listening to you and I wish you good luck with all the important work you do for the future smart city and to prevent injuries in the future in workplaces. So a warm applaud for Alexander and Lemmy.